guys, today we talk marker lights. Um, I'm going to show you how I rig these up on the cheap and uh, how you can power them. And whether you want to run them all the time or not, there's some options. Um, so if you're looking for a relatively cheap option for installing these marker lights uh, in your Rebel, this is 2020, um, stick around. Some of the stuff you're going to need to hook up these marker lights. Um, anytime I do electrical connections, I like to solder. So you need a soldering iron, a little bit of solder. Uh, these helping hands are very handy um, when you're by yourself trying to solder stuff. Um, you've got the marker lights themselves. These are three quarter inch. Um, they're five, two, three already on the truck. So I'm going to show you how I soldered them up um, using one of these. They're cheap, 15 bucks. I think you can get five. They're nice, uh, nice smoked look. Nice thing about them is they fit right in the grill. I didn't have to glue them or anything like that, just stuck them in. 22 gauge wire, so it's nothing real heavy. Um, just enough to carry a 12 volt signal. Um, I use speaker wire just because I had some laying around. It's 18 gauge, it's a little heavier than the wire that it comes with, so that's kind of nice. Um, right now I've got a fuse tap running them. Um, that I've hooked up to the fuel pump. So this is just going to be a Micro 2 ATR blade fuse uh, tap. You can get them on Amazon. They come in packages of five. Obviously you'll need a wire stripper. Um, I like to use dielectric grease anytime I do any sort of soldering uh, just in case water were to find its way down in there past the heat shrink tubing. Um, and you'll need that for the heat shrink. So the first thing we're going to do with these is we're going to strip a little bit of the wire off. Um, it's 22 gauge like I said. Mine only go up to 20, but that should be fine. In fact, I'm going to go a little bigger. Go ahead and do um, about a half an inch. Just take care that you don't cut any of the wire itself. Now with these, um, you know, it gets a little tricky because you have to remember what's positive, what's negative. I believe the black's positive on here. Um, and with the speaker wire, you know, it's a little tricky because it's not marked. So we're going to mark it with a little Sharpie to remember what's hot and what's, what's not. So next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some of the speaker wire. I think I measured out about three feet. Um, and cut off about a, a hunk of about three feet. So if you're putting in three marker lights, you're going to want to cut three of these. If you're putting in five marker lights, you're going to want to cut, cut five of these. Um, might have been a little more than three feet. I don't know. Maybe about 46 inches. <clears throat> Give yourself enough to play with. You can always, you can always shrink it down later. Um, so then what I'm going to do is just kind of separate these two. Uh, I'm going to use a, a blade to do that. So just kind of take care that you don't nick the wire when you're separating the speaker wire. So now that I've cut that I can pull it. I'm going to leave it together for now, um, just to kind of keep it tidy. I'm going to go ahead and strip these out. Like I said, these are 18. Um, so I'm going to use the same setting on my strippers. So there we go, 18. And 18, okay. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a good connection uh, between the speaker wire and the marker light. Okay. First step would be don't forget the heat shrink. Um, you want to go ahead and slide that down over the wire before you do any sort of soldering. I think we're using the 530 seconds here. That seems to be the size that I run through the most. I'm just going to slide it down over each of these. Okay. And the reason we're doing this is it's going to help protect our connection, keep the water out of there. 
if water were to ever get up uh, in the grill. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the solder um, connection. So we're going to do one of these at a time. One of the things I forgot to mention uh, in the stuff you'll need, I use paste flux when I'm soldering just to kind of get a better uh, just to kind of get a better solder. So I've got an old can of it, um, you know, for plumbing stuff. And once I braid these wires together, I'm going to go ahead and brush it with some of that. I'll move this a bit so you can see. Okay. Now to create a good uh, connection, I've read and I've looked up videos and I've practiced. Main thing is just practice. Um, just like anything else, practice makes perfect. So I used to be really bad at soldering. Um, I like to think I've gotten better. A couple different methods you can use here. Um, I think they call this the Western Union. This is just a twist where I'm twisting these wires together. Make sure you don't get a big lump of wire. Um, and just kind of do your best to, to get them together. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is take some of that paste flux and uh, just kind of brush it all over where I'm going to make that solder. Sorry. So you guys can see that. So I got just this old paste flux. Gonna run it all over the wire. Okay. Make sure everything's nice and tight before I finalize with the solder. You just want to take your time. Um, okay, so the next thing that I have done some reading on is uh, this was one of the mistakes I used to make before I kind of knew what I was doing is you just want to kind of like when plumbing you don't want to heat the solder if you're sweating a pipe you want to put the pipe together and then heat the joint so you want to heat you want to take a minute to heat the wire you're gonna see smoke start to rise off of it as that flux starts to, to burn and it's going to take a little while to get these hot enough for the solder to melt. So again, it's going to take a little while. Some people said put a dab of solder on the iron and that'll help heat it up a little faster. I don't know if that works. Could work, but just kind of let the tip sit on there for a bit. Okay. quite hot enough yet. The wire is now hot enough. You'll notice I'm not feeding it onto the iron. I'm feeding it right directly onto the wire. And what's happening is that that paste flux is carrying it down between the wires to make a nice connection. I don't want to get a big glob on there, but I want to put enough 
to make sure that it's going to be a, a good connection. So a lot of times, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and give it a yank. That is not moving anywhere. So, um, okay, so the next thing that I do from here, take a little bit of dielectric grease. That's the, the stuff. And I'll go ahead and just put a dab here. Um, I saw this on a video. It's not a bad idea. If water were to get into the joint past the heat shrink, this would help repel the water away from your connection. So this stuff's cheap. You might as well go ahead and goop some on there. Now the next thing you do is you take your heat shield and you come back and cover up your connection. Okay, sort of like what you just did. Um, <clears throat> they call it heat shrink because when it touches heat, it shrinks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've I've seen guys say from the middle out. So we're gonna go from the middle. And what they say is that will that will push some of that dielectric grease um, out towards the edges. All right, my lighter is dying. I'm going to go grab another one. Just enough to, to shrink it over both wires. Okay. And you should have something that looks roughly like that. Okay. This could probably use a little more shrink. Okay, so nice tight connection. You're going to want to do the other side as well. So I'm going to I'm just gonna do it quick. Um, maybe I'll fast forward this so you don't have to sit here and watch me go through the whole process again. Uh, I'm going to run another larger sleeve over both of these. So we're going to go a step up. This is, I think, 3 16 And I'm going to feed it from the other end of the speaker wire. I think it's going to be wide enough to cover both. I guess we'll see here in a second. Yeah, you got to kind of run it on there. I want to say I did two of these when I did mine. Um, so I'll do one here, and then I'll run another one up. Again, it's this stuff's super cheap. I buy the uh, I buy the kit. I should probably just buy this size in bulk because. It's really the only two sizes you ever end up using, or at least I do. I'm never soldering big thick wire. So try to kind of run one into the other, and then we'll go ahead and uh, shrink it. I didn't use dielectric because we're not really on bare wire here. We're just kind of trying to cover our bases. connection, good soldered connection with the grease and with the heat shields from the um, marker light all the way down all 46 inches uh, to the end here. Now um, if you're doing this on your own truck, you do as many of these as you would want to install. So if you're going to do three like, like I did to kind of simulate the TRX, uh, we won't say the R word, 
we, uh, we do three. Okay, just like that. What you're probably going to want to do next, and I did not do this the first time, is probably pop this, this off. Um, what you're going to want to do is get probably a little pry bar. Um, and you can see there's like an opening on these. You're just going to want to put your pry bar into the opening. And hard to do it one-handed. There you go. Pop it. Just like that. Don't, you know, you don't need to put force on this like it's a crowbar or anything like that. You just want to pop these little things. And once you do, um, they'll come out. Okay, so once you have this off, you can see that you can go ahead and position these lights however you want. Um, I chose just the high and tight, these three right above the RAM, kind of like the TRX in a way. Um, you fish the wire through, you can kind of see it running behind the grill. <coughs> um, so I fished it through. I tried to get this con this uh, shield over as much of it as I could. I could probably get them a little better here, but so then I run the shielding down all the way along underneath this front bar. I take it in front of the uh, overfill down here and this is where I so you've got six wires coming off those three lights right so rather than have to mess with six wires um, I spliced or soldered on it just reduced it down to two just to simplify things at this point same deal solder heat shields dielectric grease I ran the negative over here and just tied it into this bolt um, and then the positive I used a wire tap that's that micro uh, AT wire tap let me see if I can pull it out here so you can look at it okay so that's all it is your hot runs into it here I just kind of taped it up to try to do some management here the bottom fuse is going to be your uh, fuel pump so that's a 25 amp the top is my lights and anytime I want the lights to run I'll pop that top fuse in that's just a 5 amp fuse um, you don't need much for those little LED uh, lamps anytime I want them to turn off I just pop that fuse out uh, and they don't run so um, they'll turn on when the truck starts up. They'll turn off when the truck turns off. And basically, anytime the fuel pump is running, the lights are on. Unless I pull this fuse, if I get tired of the look. Um, that's the the spot for the fuel pump is right next to this big, I don't know, relay type thing. So that's that's that. Um, before I had had them running into the blazer, uh, that got to be a little bit of a pain. Anytime I wanted to turn them on, I had to turn on my Bluetooth phone, and then I had to I had to find the right hookup. Um, you know, and that whole song and dance. So the wiretap was a little bit easier for me. Okay. So let me go ahead and turn the truck on, and you can see them in action again. I don't want 
those to run. I just pull the fuse. I'll show you what that looks like here. There's that little uh, orange fuse. And it helps me remember that's for the lights. I just stick that in the dash or wherever. And uh, when I'm feeling froggy and I want to look you know, it's, on, it's Flex Friday. Um, I'll go ahead and see that. There we go. So again, cheap marker lights. a minute to thank you guys for watching my videos. Um, I posted my first video about three months ago. I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, now, you know, the, the video's gotten like 6,000 views. kind of freaks me out a little bit, but uh, I appreciate you guys checking out the content. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe. Uh, please click the thumbs up.